What's up guys, Spinfire Arms here, and I was asked to revisit my list of Micro 9s. I made it a goal over here on this channel to get almost every Micro 9 so I can shoot them, compare them, do size comparisons and stuff like that for you guys. It's very hard to go out to the local gun store and say I want to see that, next to that, next to that, next to that. Where here, I can sort of do that for you guys, also I can take them out to the range and stuff like that. So we're going to be revisiting my list of Micro 9s, and I'm going to let you guys know what I think. I think I have almost all of them. If not, drop it in the comments. Another thing I want to say is shout out to somebody who sent me, an actual supporter, subscriber of the channel, sent me some backdrops. Actually, really cool. Hit me up in my email or sent it through Amazon. Really cool of them. Um, I'm working on getting a better setup, a better place to film, and when we move, we're going to be getting some land and an outdoor range, and we're going to be testing this stuff right out of my backyard. So that'll really help for making shooting content while still taking care of my family, working full time and stuff like that. So we're gonna get into that. First off, these are not in order. What I like about Micro 9s is that they're small enough that basically anyone can carry them. Even the larger Micro 9s can basically be concealed by almost anybody. And that's a huge thing. Everyone's body styles are different. Everyone's a different size. Therefore, it doesn't always work <clears throat> for everybody with certain handguns. With Micro 9s, basically everyone can carry with them. So let's get into it. We gotta start off with the Hellcat series. This has been my favorite since the jump. I have a couple Hellcats. This is my stainless edition. I actually don't carry this one. I carry my black one with a Vortex Defender on it. And any optics you see on the table, you can use code SPNF at Optics Planet. That'll save you a small percentage off your order, but anything matters right now. Things are really expensive. So I think it takes off like 7% off your order. So if you're looking for optics or anything else that Optics Planet sells, Go ahead and use code SPNF at Optics Planet. Anyways, the Hellcat series is just great. On top of that, they made stuff like the Hellcat Pro and the Hellcat Pro Comp, which allowed us to use a 17 round mag out of an OG Hellcat. You just use the 15 round mag sleeve and you get 17 plus one out of a handgun like this. And what's nice is it has a rail, so you could potentially make this a one-stop shop, home defense and everyday carry. So I love the Hellcat series. They're one of the micro nines with the least amount of issues upon release as well as some of the most long-term durability in terms of round count and stuff like that. So I really like the Hellcats. I really like the way they're made. Right here is the comp version of the Pro. Great handgun. This is a perfect size. It's a middle ground between a compact and a Micro 9. Very shootable with capacity still. I really like the Hellcat Pro series and the Pro comp. Absolutely love the Hellcat. Next up is actually still going to be the Shield. I love the shield and I love how affordable it is. You can find these for like $350 right now. This is just a plain Jane shield, you know, regular three dot sights, not optics ready, even as a manual safety. It's a great shooting gun, flat shooting. It's a little bit bigger than your average micro nine, but that's sort of nice for people if they want that middle ground. I throw a whole grip on it and it feels really good. I get it makes it a little thicker, but it's such a small and thin handgun as is, you can still conceal it with the whole grip and it feels super ergonomic with that grip on it so i really like that now when my wife or my mom shoots it they like it without the whole grip just wanted to put that out there but i really do love the shield series and i love what smith and wesson is doing in general so love the shield plus on top of that they released recently which is going to be a little bit more expensive but in my opinion it's worth it and in my opinion if you like smith and wesson get the shield you know the shield plus first and then save up and get this but this is the four inch and it's the carry comp as you can see, it's got a big port right up front, night sights right out of the box. They put the port after the sight, so you're not gonna dirty up that yellowish green outline front. Awesome serrations on it, great texturing, flat face trigger. And one big benefit I like, because magazines are a little expensive, is it comes with a 10 round flush mag, a 13 round mag, and a 15 round mag. You can make this your home defense as well as your carry. And what's nice about that is they just released the Streamlight TLR6 HL, which is double the lumens, from the old TLR6, the original. So that will mount to your trigger guard right here. And you can still carry it with the flush mag of the 13, potentially even the 15, but at home, it can also become your home defense firearm. So I absolutely love the shield. Plus, um, this is better than the original Performance Center. So great, great value at about $650. Next up, not my favorite shield plus. I just wanted to point this out. This isn't better than a lot of these, but the super carry. I'm still trying to shoot it good. Threw a hoe grip on it, feels really good in the hand, but what I like about this is the price. There's $299 on grab a gun, $250 if you send in with a rebate, and on top of that, $13 plus one with the flush mag, $16 plus one 
with the larger mag. And I heard that 30 Super Carry, there are gonna be some other models coming out, 30 Super Carry from other manufacturers that I believe will truly help that round grow. It is an oddball round. It didn't catch fire like they're hoping for, but hopefully we'll see some other people make models and make it a more mainstream thing because the capacity 13 plus one out of this is just crazy. So that's that. Next up, Glock 48. It's sort of hard to consider this a micro nine, but a lot of people do. So I'm gonna throw it in the video. It has a grip length of a 19, barrel length a little bit longer than a 19, but super ergonomic the hand. It's gonna be much thinner, just a really shootable handgun. This one's extremely broken in, which I really like. When you have a broken in handgun, it's just smooth as can be. Everything runs and it feels good. The trigger loosens up a little bit. The guide rod loosens up a little bit. Everything just functions better. So nothing sticks. It just feels really, really smooth, if that makes any sense. Love my Glock 48. Threw some excess sights on there. Good to go. Don't need an optic. Don't need a light. This is how I carry because I'm barely out during the nighttime, right? Next up, 43X. They're almost interchangeable to me, even though I do like the 48 a little bit better. Um, you can swap the uppers. So if you have a 43X or a 48, just buy an upper from the other handgun. You can have both. Absolutely love my 43X though. Accurate as can be. And I think that what makes the 43X and 48 such a good gun is the ergonomics, the natural point of aim, and the way it feels in the hand. It makes it really easy to shoot for a lot of people. Put the 407K on there and have an awesome small complete package at 10 plus one for 11 rounds doesn't hold as much capacity as a lot of the other micro nines but 10 plus one should be good to go now let's see it's going to get a little hard up in here but uh fn reflex a little different than everything else you see on the table it's got an internal hammer there are two total hammer fire micro nines that i have on this table i actually don't have that car micro nine and i'm also hoping that walther and cz put out their micro nines so we'll get to those when they come FN Reflex. Mine has been great. I know a lot of people who has had terrible, or sorry, who have had terrible, terrible times with the Reflex. I mean, all sorts of issues. I know one person who loved his so much they didn't give up, and they went through like three of them. Then they gave up. But mine's been great. Great trigger. You still have to get used to it a little bit. Um, good ergonomics, good capacity. Just a solid handgun. Mine's not optics ready, but you can get the optics ready version. Comes with a nice sight picture. Three dot. Tritium front with an orange outline. Good gun, ready to go, right out of the box. Let's see, now it's going to get really hard. Smith & and CSX. This firearm was absolutely destroyed by a bunch of um, reviews that were negative. I like mine. Everyone that I know that has shot it has liked it. Everyone I know that comments down below about it has liked it. Um, I like mine. It's an aluminum frame, metal frame, so it's sort of different than everything else on here. Not quite a 1911, but sort of. Um, just super small, like a really small handgun, 12 plus 1, but I really like the ergonomics of it. That's what makes it such a good gun to me. It's comfortable, and with that trigger, you can dump 12 plus 1 in 2.5 seconds. I have a video up on my channel of me shooting this accurately, 2.5 seconds, 13 rounds. So, great handgun. It's slept down. I believe it's discontinued. So I see them all over the place for like 400, 425, stuff like that. I think it's a great pickup. Other people don't. It is what it is. It's all up to preference, all up to what you like, all up to how it feels, stuff like that. But it's one of the flattest shooting micro nines out there. Accurate as can be. I love this thing. That's the CSX. Next up, like I said, it's about to get hard. I'm going to have to go with the Stoger SDR9 Micro Compact. Now, I made a video about this talking about some of the issues I had with it. It just happened to be the magazine. I got two magazines when I bought this, and it ran flawlessly. Then I was using this one magazine, and the springs were just messed up, and I had three malfunctions in one mag. I was going to send it back, but one of my buddy who has one of these said, hey, let's run my mags through it. Let's put some round through it. So we did. We put probably 600 more rounds through it with his mags, so not a single issue. Then we put rounds through it with the other mag of mine, had issues. Then we use the flush mag of mine, no issues. So we toss out that mag. It's been 100% reliable so far. I love this thing. It's a great package. I just prefer the more expensive package. It's about $100 more, but you get night sights and optics ready and stuff like that. I do not like the adjustable sights, but this thing is a great handgun. It's a sleeper. And I believe Stoger is going to be more of a mainstream company. The more and more they make releases <clears throat> that are affordable to the average person. Next up, Mossberg MC2SC. Just a good feeling handgun. What I like about it is the second you feel it, 
in your hand, you're like, okay, this thing feels great. Then you shoot it and you're like, this thing really handles recoil, has a decent trigger on it, lots of features. Optics ready, once again, I put the EPS carry on it, makes for a really nice handgun setup. You can sort of co-witness right there with about a third of your sight picture. I did throw some grips on it, but it does have decent texture, memory pads, decent trigger guard. I like this handgun. I really like the finish on it. And I think as Mosberg, just like Stoger, the more and more the stuff they put out, the more and more they're going to get recognized. And um, the one thing I would say I don't like about it, though, is how you take it down. You have to remove the striker by pressing on the striker plate. You got to press down on it. Touching your striker while you're cleaning your gun, lubrication can cause light primer strikes. But as long as you're aware of that, you'll be just fine. The Mosberg MC2SC has been a great gun. Next up, I'm going to have to go Canik Meta MC9. Canik's growing on me ever since I got my replacement guide rod. It's been flawless. Uh, it's a good shooter. comes with a good finish. The trigger guard is just really small, and that's hard for me if you have a little bit fatter fingers and you wear gloves in the winter. This may not be your main carry in the winter, but summertime it's fine. Um, I actually have a nice holster for it, and it runs. Good capacity, good shootability, and the trigger's just flawless. So, Great sight setup too. You get a blacked out rear with a white dot front. Wish it was tritium. Not the biggest deal to swap out though. So overall, a good, good package. And what I want to say is, I like other ones better than others, but the margin is just small. All of these are great. There's just a couple differences here and there that make the handgun what I like. And that's just all preference. You guys might be the complete reverse order, and that's fine. It's just my opinion at the end of the day. Next up, man, we're getting down there. I'm going to have to say, got to give it to the GX4. Might have been great. This thing is beat up though, scratched up, looks like crap, and it barely has any holster time. So that's my one complaint is the finish. But for the price, what you get, the texturing, the ergos are on point, the trigger is really good. Glock sight picture. So you basically have the option to put any sights that you could ever imagine on your Taurus. I actually like it. Just because it's a Taurus, I'm not going to discriminate against it. I give it a fair share or a fair shake. Taurus GX4. It's actually pretty dang solid. Next up, um, IWI Masada Slim. A great shooter, a great trigger, a little bit bigger than the rest of these, but that trigger's really nice. Big trigger guard, big, thick, heavy slide, very manageable recoil, very little recoil on this. And it comes with a three dot, three dot, but the two in the rear are blacked out, which is interesting. You notch rear, good sight picture, good shooter, just personally not my favorite but a great gun for money people and a lot of people who comment on it down below love theirs so gotta respect it now we're gonna go kimber mako r7 the only kimber i'll ever own probably even though i do want to try some of their 1911 micro nines even though the one thing stopping me is all the terrible reviews all the problems so i will probably avoid it but this has been great it's been flawless great texturing good trigger has you know a proprietary rail but is what it is optics ready awesome sights rail the box i mean awesome awesome sights you know rear with the white outline orange out front all tritium awesome finish on it great capacity feels pretty decent in the hand um there's just some things i would change on it but overall i really do like the kimber mako r7 it's a pretty dang good gun once again i have nothing against any of these Next up, the SIG P365. This one ran 500 continuous rounds in my video against the Hellcat, so you got to respect that. It's been flawless. This one has also been flawless. No problems, no issues with these. My other two had problems, had issues. Uh, so not my most favorite handguns in the world, but a lot of people love them. They sell like crazy. It's just I feel like they're made a little cheap. The springs have been known to be out of spec. The X trigger is known to have problems, stuff like that. Their release was a disaster, but they're great shooters. And they're the ones that set it all off for everybody, so you got to respect it. SIG P365, not a bad shooting gun. I just don't prefer it over the rest. Last but not least, I think it's a good try, a good gun. The Ruger Max 9. Awesome sight picture. You get a fiber optic tritium front. Just not a fan of the finish. Um, a lot of people have issues with rust. A lot of people, even one of the guns... At the gun counter at my local range store, had rust. How are you about to sell a gun with rust on it? That's crazy, but good texturing. Trigger could use a little bit of work, but there are trigger shoe upgrades for it that do change it a little bit. Um, does come with a manual safety for those who want one. Not a bad shooter, just not my go-to. 
100% reliable, so I can't complain in that department. Very shootable, not a lot of recoil. A lot of people don't like the rattle. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but good gun, Ruger Max 9. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.